Hey guys, so today I'm going to share with you five tips on that will hopefully increase your junior year success. But first, if this is the first time you've seen my face, two things. Oh, that's four. <laughs> two things. I happily welcome you and very, very nice to meet you. Now, I know at least for me, high school was an extremely hard time. You had to deal with a lot of stuff on top of trying to maintain decent grades and then go to all these parties and things like that. And so if you're watching this and you're a junior, you know, you're halfway there. So hopefully this video will give you some hope. <laughs> but I can tell you at least that it does get better if you are having a rough time in high school. But I hope that these tips can provide you with some positivity and hopeful thoughts that it will get better. So without further ado, let's just get on down to these tips. All right, so tip number one is you need a notebook or a binder. Pick one, doesn't matter. All right, I have a simple spiral notebook, you know, like 100 pages, but this is important, okay, because you need a place to compile everything that you accomplished throughout your four years in high school. And now that I mentioned that, this really sh this tip should be in like a freshman year guide or something like that, because you really need something like a notebook or a binder to keep all your stuff in for all four years of high school. Because I know for me, when I started to apply for colleges and I was trying to remember everything, it was a hot mess. I was over here trying to be like, okay, did I put this over here? How many hours of this? Where did I do that? It was terrible. And I was just so stressed out. And then on top of that, senior year, I mean, sen for me, senior year was an easy year, but, ugh, my gosh. I don't even wanna think about it, but yeah. Make sure you have something, something to keep your thoughts in order so that you know you can come back when it's time to start applying, which is first semester of senior year, and you just have all that stuff in one location. You know, all your community service hours, all your accolades and awards. My second tip for you guys is begin to find your niche. And let me explain. Traditionally, we prior for the most part, people think of the career paths as, you know, math, science, English, history. Those are like the four core subjects that you have in school. And then therefore, you assume that a career has to align with one of those four, but that's definitely not the case. There are so many careers out there that are extremely viable and extremely lucrative, and it's not even about the money, it's just about being happy and enjoying what you're doing. The money is like secondary, at least in my opinion. But the reason I put this tip on here, it's because when it comes time to apply for schools, I think colleges like students that at least to some degree look like they know what they want. And if you structure your course load in a way that looks like, oh, this person really likes math because he took yada, yada, yada. He took five courses throughout his entire high school career. Or like me, I graduated with 13, not 13 like 11, like 11 or 12 science credits. And I did that intentionally because in high school, I knew I was really good at science. I was my best subject um, next to math, but I wanted colleges to see that I knew that I wanted to go after science and I knew what classes I needed to take. So my advice under this tip would be uh, really, really think when it's time to apply for, or not apply for, but sign up for those courses, really think about what class, be intentional with those classes that you select for your schedule. Don't just take classes because your best friend says, ooh, we should take this class. I know that's tempting, but don't do that. Take the class because you wanna take that class and you wanna get something out of that class. Also, I highly, highly recommend you read this book if you have any interest of just seeing where your interests align with your future career path, or what you think will be your career path. This book is called What Color Is Your Parachute? I don't know if you can see that. But as you can see, I've read it. I've read all, every single page in this book. I loved it. Um, and you can see that I have sticky notes throughout to remind myself of pages that I like. Um, but this book, basically, its tagline, it says, a practical manual for job hunters and career changers. And I know you guys aren't at that point yet, 
However, this book is extremely useful if you're trying to see, where, like I said, where your interests align with your future career paths. Or if you don't have any idea of what you might want to do, this book can help you because it, it really breaks it down for you. It breaks down what do you like to do, um, even things that you think can't make it as careers. It really opens your eyes to the possibilities. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out that book. It's called What Color Is Your Parachute? And it's written by, I always mispronounce his last name, Richard Boles. Boles, that's what we're going with. B-O-L-L-E-S. So yeah, check it out if you're interested in that. My third tip for you guys is begin to find your identity. Um, this is a big one, um, especially in high school, because high school, really, that's kind of like the first place where you really are trying to find your identity, and it's quite difficult when you're dealing with a lot of judgmental people that you'll encounter throughout high school, um, a lot of superficial things that just don't mean anything. Be comfortable with who you are. Be you. Be shameless about it. Who cares? Do you. Um, don't feel sorry for doing you. And I think if you have that outlook on life and while you're in high school that you will experience success, much more success in your junior year, in high school, in college, and beyond. So do that. I know it, it, it'll be difficult because you have so many you have so many voices in high school, so many things that are always popping popping in your head. So but just try and find 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 out who you are and do that in any which way you have to. My fourth step for you guys is solidify those personal relationships with your professors. Now this is extremely important in regards to recommendation letters because who's going to write your rec letter? Not you. You can't write a rec letter for you. Although I might be able to. I could probably write me a rec letter. But no, that's not the, <laughs> that's not the point. Who, honestly, who's going to write those rec letters? It's your professors and the teachers that you are engaging with. Usually it's the teachers that you had junior and senior year. Um, possibly sophomore year, just depends. Um, or maybe a coach. But form those personal relationships with those teachers because I honestly believe that if a teacher has a personal relationship with you, you know, rather than just that basic surface level teacher-student relationship, they'll be able to write a much more valuable um, recommendation letter for you. So I definitely recommend that, you know, pick two or three teachers to get close to, to, to get honestly get to know, um, forge friendships with them. Yes, they are your teacher, keep them, you know, within bounds, of course, but just form those relationships. I think that's important. They'll be able to write you a much better rec letter, and you will appreciate that, especially if that's the thing that helps you get into the school that you want to get into. And so, you guys, my fifth and final tip is arguably the most important. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. You, uh, I can't tell you how much unnecessary stress I put on myself because I had certain expectations, and when I didn't reach those expectations, I would just get so down, um, and they were just so unnecessary. Just stupid stuff. For example, me, I took my academics extremely seriously, probably more serious than I needed to, um, which sounds counterintuitive, but I'll give you an example. There was this test, this calculus test. I wanted to get a 95. That was like my, my goal. And so I go in, I take the test, I leave, I'm like, mm, okay, I feel good. I felt good. I was like, yep, mm-hmm, got that 95. No, I got I got it back, and I got a 93. Um, so naturally, one shouldn't be mad about a 93. Yeah, well, I was. Yeah. Why was I mad about a 93? I don't know. Looking back, it, it sounds more stupid now than it was then. But yeah, I was, I was angry about a 93. Not angry, per se, but just... I felt sad, or like I felt less achieved. But a 93 is great. It's, it's an excellent score. It's an A. Um, there was no reason for me to put unnecessary stress on myself because I didn't get a 95. I got a 93. 
Um, and if I really still wanted that 95, I should have turned. I should have learned from that, which leads me to my next point of this tip: learn from those mistakes. We will all, at some point in time, experience failure, but we shouldn't let it define us. We shouldn't let it change us. Well, in learning, we should let it change us, but we shouldn't let it change us change us for the worse. With that being said, accept the fact that you will fail. I don't know when, but at some point you will. And we all will, and that's just inevitable, and we just should accept it. And I think the sooner we can do that, the sooner we will experience much more success in everything we do. And for you guys, what I'm talking about now, school and academics, but in anything, in achieving our dreams, um, in anything. So yeah, you guys, those are my five tips for you guys. That's all I've got. But before I leave, and before you leave, please... Follow me on my social media pages. You can follow me at Instagram and Twitter. And add me on Snapchat at the username Classy underscore Kane. And Kane is spelled C-A-I-N. And lastly, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to follow College Express as well on all of their social media pages. And their username for everything is College Express. So do that so you can stay connected with me and College Express and check out their website because I know for me their resources were extremely beneficial. And with that being said, I will see all of you next week. Bye!